So I was really, really fortunate to be born in a time and place where there really wasn't much to do in far as external entertainment. My mother, um, whenever I complained of being bored, she would tell me, what you need to do is find something constructive to do. So I sort of learned to keep myself busy and entertained at a really early age. What I like about sculpting is that it's so multifaceted. It involves, you know, of course, the conception of an idea and use constructions. It involves chemistry. It involves manufacturing. It's much more complicated. Plus, I really love the feeling of the clay. I love to make three-dimensional objects. It's very easy for me to take something that's flat and make it dimensional. It's just a very natural process. So typically what I do is I decide on what I'm going to make and then I make a wire armature. I start and it's mounted on a board and then little by little I add, add clay to form a body. I build an actual body that has no clothes on and is anatomically correct and perfect as if it's going to have no clothes on. Then I dress the body just like you would put clothes on. Every part's my favorite part, with the exception of the end. Because when it ends, it's just, sometimes I feel really, uh, I feel let down because it was so much fun, you just don't want it to end. It's kind of like empty nest. Yeah, but empty studio syndrome. And then I start thinking, what am I gonna do next, you know? I think becoming a therapist was something that I, I did. I was at a certain transition point. I really wanna use my art in a different way to help people. I think having a therapeutic background helps me to connect with them in a unique way, that I can give them something different that, that maybe provides a little bit of hope. So I, in order to you know really be present for somebody else, I really have to take care of myself. So oftentimes meet with clients and then I take a break and I go work in the studio and then I come back and I meet with more clients. So it's like traversing through two different realities. It's really my own type of therapy. It's so my two little girls who are identical twins and they were maybe like almost four months old and um, I went in one morning and I only heard one of them crying and, and Paige had died. She had died of SIDS. The grieving process was really complicated because in one sense you're completely devastated and in another sense you feel so fortunate because you have one, but it's complicated because there is an, one that looks exactly like the one that's not, that, that you buried. And I don't think there's any getting over. You learn to coexist with it. That's, that's about what you can say, yeah. I think when you're immersed in an art project, um, I think you can't ruminate about your problems and create art at the same time. It's very healing because it expresses, you're expressing emotions and feelings. It just helps you work out whatever's going on, but you can't ruminate it on, on it at the same time. Because if you're really present with your artwork, it requires focused attention. Okay, Let's Play is a piece of a big, beautiful angel, and she's running with a child, or she's walking with a child. And the child it represents my child that's not here. I was feeling really bad, really low, and just feeling, wondering, like all parents do, they wonder when their child's not here, who's taking care of them, is she okay, what is she doing? You you do wonder this, and this is this is a very normal thing, and I, I was feeling really bad one day. And Meredith had a toy, and it was it was not on a modern toy like we have now, but really hard to use. So, like I said, I was feeling really bad, and one day I walked by Meredith's room, and that toy turned on and said, okay, let's play. And that happened in the course of a week three different times. And 
I believe that, you know, it's an after-death communication. It's her way of telling me that she's okay. So I have done a big angel and she is with my daughter. And I hope it's a very hopeful piece for people. Movement's huge. Um, it tells the story, it lets the viewer know what's going on, what it means. We want it in such a way that, you know, people can, can inject sometimes their own meaning into something. Like with this piece I'm working on now, it doesn't have to necessarily be a child that's in the hereafter. It can be a child here that's being watched over. When you really get down to it, the, the message behind it is it's about finding hope or creating awareness for something. There are a lot of people that can make really beautiful things, but what does the beautiful thing mean? It should, it should be used for the greater good. I think sculpting is like life. You know, you take raw elements and, you know, you, you implement purposefulness and intention and you can create something really beautiful. It both presents challenges, the opportunity for problem solving. Um, it's about a, achieving balance, about perspective. Uh, it's about acceptance, humility, beauty. It's a blank canvas and it's nothing but possibilities. That's what I love about it. I'll be out there and I'm working on something and it gets real tedious and I think, why am I doing this? Why is this, why am I compelled? I don't know, I just am. I just have to do it.